Okay, well... I don't think we finished looking at the previous island, but we can look at this island too. Because this one seems a little bit safer, judging by what we saw last time. It was mostly trees and whatever around. But if we want to collect the samples, because I noticed that a lot of the trees seem to take up multiple slots. That might be a problem. Much prettier in daytime. But I don't want to go down because I don't know how to get back up again. So maybe this time, let's have a look around the exterior. Yeah, it's a totally different view. You sh probably shouldn't be holding a beacon. <laughs> Java Cup. A common land fungus found in clusters grows quickly, size is limited only by available nutrients and space. Okay. It's not underexploitable. It's not important. <laughs> what is that stuff? Ex Wait, what? Exterior grow bed. Advanced synthetic soils allow this grow bed to support a huge variety and quantity of alien plant life, and it can be installed anywhere on land or underwater, where there is space. Oh, an even better place for me to grow my stuff. Yeah, these are decomposing. I don't know if it really matters. We'll just, I mean, we'll leave it alone for now, maybe. I'm a little bit surprised we can't scan this tree, because obviously something is wrong with it. It's glowing. Marble melon. Small marble melon. This plant collects water from the air rather than relying on its root system and produces large fleshy fruits which are both edible and have a typically high water content. Great. But you know what this means though? Uh, maybe I can build a bulbul tree right here. Would that be okay, actually? How do I put stuff in the... Oh, uh, maybe I'm not sure how this works. Oh, this is so nice because it takes up so little space. Alien fruit. Eat it. It doesn't say it can be replanted, though. And this one's big. Eat it. Bring a small one home. This means that somebody was planting stuff here, doesn't it? Because this is not... Uh, I find it kind of hard to believe that an alien would plant this stuff. Chinese potato plant? The Chinese potato is common throughout the China territories, where synthetic foods are still stigmatized and there remain large tracts of arable land on which to grow fresh produce. Genetically designed prior to the expansion, this plant is highly adaptable to different environments and a staple of new colonies galaxy-wide. The expansion. Expansion of uh, mankind's defiling of the galaxy. Okay. Well, this sounds like a human brought it over then, because why would it be... Why would the aliens have access to this? Chinese potato. It's not that great though, actually. Oh. Okay, for food? We're totally fine here. Totally. But we can't bring this stuff... Mm. We can bring it back. Oh jeez, why is this... Oh! It's the, the super quick night time again. <laughs> the eclipse. That's super fast. Is that even the same sun that we have in the solar system? It's not a given. Oh, there's so much vegetation around here. I want to pick all of it up, but I don't have that kind of space. I'm still a little bit worried about... going down. I feel like if we fall down, we're not going to find a way back up. It's not the end of the world, because hopefully we can swim back to... 
my life pod, which isn't too far. It's about the distance from my life pod to the sunbeam. As long as we have batteries in our sea glide, shouldn't be the biggest of issues. Oh, there's bubble trees here too. Oh my god, there's so much stuff here. This is a great place to just grab a bunch of plants and get out of here. But the bubble tree? This one explicitly says you can grow it if you plant it in the right conditions. It doesn't say that for the marble melon. I wonder if we can plant those. Yeah, as long as I remember... Yeah, I've got the beacon there. It'll be fine. We can walk around. There is so much stuff here. Why don't we live here? Why don't we build our new home here? Huh? Seriously. We'll never go hungry here. I mean, why wouldn't we want to live on land anyway? I know Subnautica is like water, but why... If we see land, why would we not want to move to land? Especially because I've got itchy skin and whatever too. I feel like I should probably move on land. Then wouldn't I want to like go on land to make sure that my my itchy, irritated skin is at least dry. Okay. So far, it seems to be the same kind of plants over and over again, except for that one place with the grow beds. The grow beds do imply that somebody was here. Maybe there's survivors here, because as far as we know, I'm life pod 5, but there's at least 19 life pods. 19! That's a lot! I can't be the only person alive in these 19 life pods, can I? I mean, that would be completely insane. What made me so lucky? You know, I was wondering about this, but you know how the turret thingy? The control room said that I can't turn off the weapon because I'm infected. But in the beginning, when I first came here, I wasn't infected, right? So if I... If I just fell from the Aurora, and then I immediately went to the control room, would I be able to turn off the weapon then? And then maybe... Maybe different things will happen then. It's quieter here. Hey! Wait, that's a life pod, isn't it? Stop! D no, no, go away. We don't, we don't have your kind here. Ow! Ow! That's a home. This is a home. But it's all cracked. That's not a good sign. Is there anything inside? Is that a laser cutter or...? Uh, I, I can't get it anyway. Huh? Spotlight. Someone's still around here? I hear a cave crawler. Stasis rifle. Stasis rifle. These are like more aggressive guns. Huh? Defensive, actually. Huh? Multi purpose room. If somebody was here then. But I think the emphasis needs to be put on the word was. Because it definitely doesn't seem like anyone's here anymore. The gassy voice log. Integrating new PDA data. Curious discovery. Paul and Margaret? And Bart! Bart! Bart was here! So this is probably from before the Aurora crash then? Because then the Aurora's mission 
I assume, is to come pick this guy up. But he was living with these people here. Paul? Wasn't Paul the guy from Life Pod 3? No, we have no names here. Okay. What is that thing? I don't know. I found it outside in the sand. Uh, part of another ship? None I've ever seen. It's not even scratched. Uh, uh, don't fool around with it. It might be worth something. Stand down, Chief. If it were going to crumble to dust, it would have done so when I picked it up. It's glowing. We're not the first people to come to this planet. People? Maybe. Could be aliens. Could be the damn sea monsters for all we know. One thing for sure, we ain't gonna find out by staying here. They're talking about the purple tablet on the thing, I think. Hmm, I wasn't the first person to come into contact with the alien stuff. But what happened to these people? They had such a perfect location here. They definitely didn't die of starvation. But this is all broken. Data box. Ultra glide fins. Streamline construction enhances swim speed considerably by comparison to regular fins. Oh! Jeez, man. You're the one making the noise. I can't crouch. There's no crouching in this game. <laughs> okay. What do I need to make it? Theoretically, I could make a habitat right here, and then make a fabricator. But I don't think I have enough titanium for that. <laughs> the one time I need titanium, I don't have it. Stasis rifle, propulsion cannon. With these things, I would definitely feel a lot better if we see some gigantic monster. Like, a lot better. Ultra glide fins. Fins! Silicone rubber. We can make this. I've got fins already. Multi-purpose room. Oh, I, I thought I needed two. Oh, I can make this too. Floodlight. Spotlight. Yeah? Makes the place a bit more lit up. Exterior... grow bed? Swivel chair. <laughs> okay. Mmm, we're... getting a good bit of stuff here. But these people, what happened to them? Is there something we can scan here? Bulkhead door. Provides structural support and prevents flooding. Flooding? I have to worry about flooding? Okay. Well, it's great that when we come across these things, we can scan them and get the information, but it's not so great that these people don't seem to be here anymore. What are we gonna do? They didn't die of starvation. Or dehydration. That's not good. Something else happened to them. Um, do these go bad? These ones are bad already. Yeah, this is old. It's old. Oh, no, no, no. No. Yeah, we'll just eat it right now. I want to bring a sample home, but if it's just gonna... If it's just gonna get old, then... Is there a point? I don't think we can plant these ones. Lantern tree. A conglomeration of individual vines which rely on one another for structural support grows exclusively on fertile land. Each vine produces orange lantern-shaped fruits with minimal nutrition and hydration value. Edible in an emergency. <laughs> in an emergency? Why? Let's see. No, you can't even get anything off of it. That's it. Okay. This might be the biggest find on this island then, but I'm kind of worried about what- Oh my god, what is that? Okay, now we gotta get there. That's another thing, isn't it? Oh! Here we go. 
I'm probably over worrying a bit. Like, I don't need to bring two first aid kits with me and like three bottles of water, especially because we already know we have the bubble trees. But I didn't know this island was gonna have this much vegetation. That's the main thing, I guess. Um, I can drink water in a little bit. Leave it here for now. Hold on, though. That looks a lot newer, doesn't it? Can we get up there? But why were there two sub- Maybe they abandoned this one and went for this one instead? Why would they put it on the very tippy top, though? It might fall over. Huh? It's not a good plan. Uh-oh, huh? Huh? we gotta be careful here. Huh? We're climbing huh? a mountain, basically. Oh, it's freaking me out how normal this tree looks. Hey, good thing I looked up, huh? Oh my god. We might have missed this entirely. Yeah, there's somebody else's- It looks like Altera homes too. It looks like a habitat built by the habitat builder. So chances are... Humans? And not only humans, but like Altera humans. <laughs> is that always a good thing? Well, it depends on how good the company is, I guess. My god, the Aurora's gigantic. Oh, there's another one there! There's so many! But yet... Mm, not the kind of sight that we want to see. <laughs> I don't think we should be standing on the cliff here. Observatory. The gassy voice log number one, habitation location. Okay. New PDA data. They moved- wait. Is that just dirt? I really hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. Yeah, we have a voice log three and one, so there must be a two. Maybe it's over on the other side. They were choosing where to live. Paul, Margaret, and Bart again. This island is a godsend. Look out of the window. No predators. Fresh food. No building materials. Nothing left of the ship. And your kid says we're gonna starve without more grow beds. Speak up, kid. Well, it's true, father. The natural growth rates are too slow to keep supporting us. All I'm saying is oceans got us surrounded. No use hiding. Sooner or later, we'll get our feet wet. The rest of your life may have been a fight, Maida. But I've made my decision. You want to forfeit your emergency pay to take a swim? Go ahead. Believe me, I'm thinking on it. No building materials? What are you talking about? Guys, you don't have to rely on technology. There's trees around here. Wood. You can build so much with that. We were down there. Yeah, okay. That probably should be our next goal. Is there anything else on the island? Not at a glance. Not anything big like this anyway. They seem to be having some disputes. Margaret believes that they should be swimming out eventually. Oh, this is okay. Am I gonna fall and die? I hope not. It's getting a little bit dark. Well, I feel like- I mean, this is a godsend, though. I would agree with Paul, at least at first glance. This place seems- you have food here, no predators. They said no predators. So we should be pretty happy here, because unless things have changed, that should still apply. But you're also not getting rescued. And if you run out of resources here, then that's also it. That's the one bad thing. But we have bubble trees, though. Come on, guys. I 
I don't know, man. I feel like I wouldn't want to leave either. It's like a mini paradise here. What the hell? Indoor grow bed. Wait, so the indoor and the exterior one is different? Fern palm. What's that noise? Is the place tipping over? The specimen was first identified in an artificial grow bed on the island. It's not listed in existing flora databases, so it is unclear whether or not it is native to this planet. Genetic code shares some features with other local plant life, but this may be the result of DNA transfusion rather than natural evolution. Yes. Because maybe they have seeds. Seeds from Earth or something, and then they grew stuff. Not necessarily here to begin with. We're contaminating the place, basically. But we can't worry about that because we don't... Beggars can't be choosers. Ah, uh, we can drink that right now. Why do I keep doing that? I keep dropping things. Return from the deep. New PDA data. Bart Torgal. This is the first time I've seen sunlight in months. After all that time in the deep, I'd been dreaming of it. Now that I'm back here, I'm finding it hard to enjoy alone. Father was right. We should never have left this place. We shouldn't have gone so deep. They do not want us down there. Despite my best efforts, ill health is taking hold of me. The visions are getting worse. Marguerite and Father are now part of the ecosystem of this incredible planet. It's reassuring to know that when I go, I'll join them. Until then, well, there's always the view. Something happened and Bart is alone. Marguerite and father died. Father being Paul? Wait, but I thought Bart... Oh, yes. Paul Torgal. So these were not... These were not Altera employees then, because... Yeah, they have their own company. It's a CEO and COO of Torgal Corp. Asia time of disappearance. Can I assume that's around the time when these logs are found? Like, Bart was 19 here? Something happened, though. And... Oh my god. We should have never left this place. We shouldn't have gone so deep. They went underwater. Probably... After finding the purple tablet. Okay, well, if Bart says don't leave this place, I'm inclined to believe him. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, so I guess it's not Altera. It's Torgal. Huh? It's getting dark here. But this is probably huh? the last of the pods we'll find here. Don't think there's more. There might be more on the island, it's just not as prominent as what we found here. And it's dark. I have 10% flashlight left, but I have one battery. I do have a battery, but my Sea Glide... Uh, 77 should be okay. We can always change it out of the laser cutter and whatever. Yeah, we should be okay. And the Habitat Builder. I brought way too much stuff. Way too much. Better be safe than sorry, I guess. Should I look around more? It's dark now, so it's hard to look around. Plus, if there's no... If there's no predators around here, I feel like we've seen all the vegetation on the island. Just at a glance. The voxel shrubs, the... Chinese Ming... No, Chinese potatoes and the Ming plants. And the lantern fruits. I haven't tried the lantern fruit yet. They have a bit of lighting too, which is nice. Food... 
is not a concern. But Marguerite, whoever she was, doesn't sound like she's the mom. She said, well, no, we gotta leave here because we want to be able to get rescued or build something. But we can't do any of these. Oh, it's dead. It's dead. Uh, minus one water? Whatever, okay. Do I want to bring multiple of these back, though? I feel like it would be nice to, but they don't really last. One thing I am curious about is the first time we used the teleportation portal, it was not that dark. And now it's nighttime on this side. So I wonder if I use it now, will it be not that dark on the other side? Like the world is just so big that this is like half a world away. Hmm. Not sure if I want to use the fresh one. Okay. Did you pick it back up again? Yeah, I mean, now we're just going back the way we came from. At the minimum, should we be circling the place? We came here. Wait, what? Oh, that's a bubble tree. I was walking around here, and then I saw the, the pod stuff. Got sidetracked. But if we keep going this way... This might just let us walk around the outer rim of the island. Pretty quiet little island. It's not the most intense. The most intense thing is probably the cave crawlers around here, but that's it. Why can't we scan the trees though? That really... Oh, here's a shore. Here's a shore. Yeah, I don't know if we want to be inside the ocean in a place that we don't know about when it's this dark at night. What the? What? What is this? Ancient floater. Cluster. I can't scan this. Well, this island is like being pushed up by these pink thingies. We saw the smaller version before clinging onto some rocks. Ancient floater. Huh? Man, it's dark. Ancient floater. I mean, coral, I guess? I don't even know what that would be under. The fauna? Ancient floater, scavengers and parasites. Biodata suggests these vast floaters have matured in an ingenious symbiosis with the land they have attached to. The attached landmass is raised in the water, increasing sunlight and encouraging plant growth. As older plants decay, organic residues and nutrients seep into the rock and are consumed by the floater. These circumstances must have held for thousands of years for a floater to reach the size. Immaculate floaters are born near the surface from where they sink to the seabed, attaching to any stable surface they find on the way. Those individuals fortunate enough to attach to a digestible nutrient source will grow in size, thus increasing their buoyancy and drawing whatever they are attached to closer to the surface. In extreme circumstances, a number of floaters may attach to a Leviathan-class life form, forcing it to the surface and effectively asphyxiating it. The body will be consumed for over a number of months until eventually dissolving, leaving the floaters free to attach to a new host. Those creatures which successfully raise a landmass to the surface are rewarded with a burgeoning and permanent food supply, allowing them to finally reproduce and begin the cycle again. Assessment incredible. Incredible, but wow. What's a normal floater like? It's like a really- so this is like a really big one to the point that the rock it attached itself to is, like, pushed above sea level. 
floater. Species living in symbiosis, which attach to and attempt to feed on any objects they come into contact with. Dominant life form. The pink main body and inner suction jaw is the dominant creature. Once attached to an organism or other stable surface, it will attempt to leach nutrients in order to grow. Microorganism membrane. The outer gel-like substance is a mesh of microorganisms capable of forming a sealed vacuum around the creature's jaws. Helium buffer. A thin layer of helium is in the outer membrane, giving buoyancy. May aid in the flotation of sunken objects. Oh, I wonder if we'll ever have to use this ability. Wait, so it's actually two things then. No, I mean the floater is just a pink thing, right? The membrane is not a different thing, is it? This one has teeth. This one doesn't seem to have teeth anymore. It's just kind of big and creepy. Because of the floaters, the ocean... Oh, it's so... I hate this. I can't see to the bottom at all. Oh, because of the floaters, the ocean is actually brighter than the surface right now. Uh, we normally get this, right? I'm just gonna look around a little bit. Wow. Gigantic, and there's multiple of them. Yeah, just one alone probably wouldn't help in pushing the island up. That's crazy! I'm so scared of looking down, holy crap, you can't see the bottom. There's a bunch of like weird st- ah! It's too deep! I don't like it, it's too deep. Oh, Wait, is it daytime already? That was fast. Oh, this is probably... You know how we were looking out from the teleportation place and then it said something like Detecting massive uh, energy sources underneath the island. Was it this one? Picking up multiple energy signatures on the island's surface. Energy signatures could be anything. I don't know. Okay. Well, for now, it seems like we have seen everything we need to see here. Maybe it's time to go back again. We did get some new blueprints, so that's good. That's really good. Yeah, why don't we then? I don't think there's much else around here. I've got a... Oh, it's some rotten bobo tree samples. Hopefully they're still plantable. And I can maybe pick up a few more things on the way back. Those habitats are still there. We didn't see them last time because it was so dark. Wow. And the sun is up again. Right. Okay. There's so many things we can look around here, I don't even know where to begin. The other life pods. And also the cloud in the distance. That seems like it's promising too. If the cloud was hiding this place, or uh, the turret island, then the other cloud must be hiding something else too. But one thing is, they found a purple tablet here. I mean, the crew. But I don't see anything that uses a purple tablet. So we might still be missing something, somewhere. And there's no ion cube thingy here. So they weren't able to leave this place, or how did that work? It's like a one-way thing. What happened to my beacon? What happened to my beacon? Um... I mean, it still says... What happened to my beacon? Hold on... It disappeared! 
Do things- uh, I think I read about how some sometimes things just clip through the floor. Is that a problem here? Well, I mean, it's not the biggest issue because I think I can probably find this place anyway, but man. Should I be putting these in the water then or what? Like maybe if I go back again and... I don't know what happened to the beacon. That makes me sad. Okay. Well, we can go back out again. Ah, uh, there was some big creature in the sea earlier. Kind of feel like I want to scan that thing and look at it, but it looks really scary. I don't feel equipped to deal with any of the big stuff. It's partially why I don't want to explore the life pods too, especially the one that said it was under attack. Like, what would we even do? We can't rescue them. We don't have a weapon. If we have like a... Um, the stasis rifle or the propulsion cannon, these things sound like they would help. But we did get a multi-purpose room and observatory. Low structural integrity, but we can look outside. <laughs> ah, we'll see. Ultra glide fins. These are probably worth making. Mm. Maybe let's go home again. We saw a lot of things today. In a pretty low danger environment. Fairly low danger. Although I am curious. Okay, if anything happens, I've got a flare. It's there, it's there. Is it as big as the... It's right there. I have a sea glide this- Dude, it's definitely the same thing as last time. It is! It is! It, it's, it's got those horns! Oh, I want to scan it. But not like this, you know? I don't want to go provoke it on purpose. That seems kind of... Not the smartest idea. I know you're here. How about we'll just live with that? Yeah. And there may be multiple too. If it really wants to chase me, I'm sure it can be faster than me. Oh, this is really... it's getting a bit deep. <laughs> I say it's getting deep, but it's only like 50 meters. I think going deeper... The deeper we go, the more difficult things are. I mean, very simply in terms of like oxygen, we gotta figure out a way to deal with... You know, for example, if we want to go to the disease facility or whatever it was, we have to figure out how to stay alive, even 800 meters below water. Which, for the moment, I'm pretty sure we don't have a way of doing that. Okay, I know... Uh, what happened to my beacons? Did I not turn them on? They're there, okay. Before going back, I do want to go maybe around this side again because... I am sure... The last time we saw Frieza around here... I didn't get to look at this thing that was on the ridge of the... Right here. Yes. I was so scared, I didn't even look at this. What is this? Cyclops engine. Fragment. We need three. Okay. Oh, sometimes you just want to look down. You want to go deeper and deeper down. Um. Okay, my concern is it looks really small from a distance, but I'm pretty sure it's not actually that small. It just looks that small. I want to look at it. I want to look at it. This area is starting to get deeper and deeper too.
think these things are usually not that great at turning around. Bone Shark. Okay, you're definitely not as big as that Leviathan Reaper thing. Oh, there's more floaters around here. The ancient kind? Oh. What was this? Prop oh! Great! Propulsion cannon. Done deal. Blueprint acquired. Hmm. Good, good. We might have been on the floaty island for a little bit too long, because... That sense of danger, it's still all around us. Still gotta be very careful. The bone shark seems okay, as long as you don't provoke it. I mean, I went pretty close to it, and it kind of, like, looked at me. Is that the same thing? I think so. I want to look at these islands here, ancient floaters. Are they ancient? I think so. Oh, good! My turret island beacon came back. Great. I actually wonder how close I am to the other stuff that we might want to be looking at. Yeah, so this one, the shallows, it's the easiest because it's still in the shallows. And then 100 meters deep, 300 meters deep, the deeper it gets, the more dangerous it is. Oh, it's starting to look really infinite down here. Wait, I had a third one, right? No, I don't need that one anymore. Hmm. Erosion patterns on the land masses suspended here suggest they once floated on the surface. What does that mean? It means they all sunk down? Is that how land works? They sink down after a while? If pieces break off because of erosion, I guess? I don't know. I don't know too much about geology or rock formations. If PDA says that's the case, I'll take it as is. Okay, now I'm just slowly floating back. I think having the propulsion cannon... I mean, I don't know what it does exactly yet until we go craft one. But that sounds like something that'll keep me safe. <laughs> I was looking at where the shadows are coming from. Hey, stop taking the scrap. I need some of those, you know? Yeah. Maybe with the propulsion cannon, I'll feel good enough to look at Life Pod 17. Because Life Pod 17 is under active attack, which is. If I hadn't gone over to the Aurora and seen that big Leviathan Reaper thing, I probably would be okay going there. It's like, not understanding what kind of world you're in. Now that you've seen the horrors of the world, you realize, oh, it's actually really dangerous and I don't want to go anywhere besides home. <laughs> so that's the... that's the kind of feeling I'm... I'm operating on here. Home sweet home. Do you guys just want to get away from my home? Like, this is not... Yeah, like, shove it please. Wonder if the scanner's even doing anything. Okay. Oh, I mean, there was another signal. We can go check it out right now. Oxygen. High priority automated message from Aurora Live Pod 13 coordinates attached. Live pod is carrying high priority passenger. Yoki Kassar. I said Kassar. Why do I have to record this anyway? 
Send immediate burial detail. Burial? Single location uploaded to PDA. Did you say burial? There are so many places I haven't gone around to looking at yet. Hold on, okay? Just hold on. Hold on. Where's this guy? High pri- wait. High priority passengers remains! Did that guy not- what? He recorded the message not understanding. The pod was saying, hey, tell us your name so that we'll tell someone to pick up your dead body. Did he not realize? Oh, it wasn't even for rescue. 